Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Bikes and today is new bike day or maybe not quite. I actually came with this Focus Sam Squared to this very woods yesterday. I filmed a first impressions video and when I got home, well the footage was useless. So here we are again with a second first impressions video. So here she is, my Focus Sam Square 2023 model. This is the 6.8 version in a size large for those who care. It's a full 29er, uh, 750 watt hour Bosch CX performance, Gen 4 smart sort of e-bike. Uh, I'm just going to bring you in real quick after that. We're going to do some riding. I'll give you my thoughts on it. And at the end, I'll tell you why I hate it yesterday and today as well, actually, uh, but not the riding. So let's first dive in. So here she is, says so on the top tube, Focus Sam Squared. Really nice here at the top, you get a little USB-C port. So when you have to retake your shots too many times and your camera dies, you can charge it straight from the bike. Um, this bike has horrible cable riding. Um, the cables actually go through the stem, through the top of the stem. So I spent uh, basically the entire day swapping that out for a race face effect stem. It's still 50 mil uh, and we're gonna see what sort of stem length I want. Um, it's got the Magura MT5 brakes with a fresh bleed on them because the cables were, well, I had to cut them to swap the stem. Can't make it up. Um, got the Bosch LED remote so not the mini remote. You also can't run the mini remote on this bike because it doesn't have the integrated system controller that most new bikes actually have in the top tube or at the bottom of the top tube. Suspension on this bike, very basic. Um, so it's the Fox 38 rhythm in the front. Uh, I think it's 180 mils of travel, but it's the rhythm. So the cheapo model. Same goes for the damper in the rear. This is a super deluxe. Um, no compression damping, it's a 500 pound spring. I don't know what it is on the medium or the small or the extra large, but on the large, it's a 500 pound spring. Slightly too soft to me, so I'll have to lose a bit of weight uh, to tune this in because no way I'm spending money on the spring. Strange thing, three bottle mount bosses in here. You'd, you'd think there are two more in here, but these threads are actually bigger uh, than a standard bottle mount. So even the bag, there's a little bag that comes with the bike, doesn't fit because, well, it's the wrong thread on these bosses. So um, yeah, big screw up by Focus there. I'll send them an email, I guess. 170 mil dropper post, it works and there's no side to side plate yet. Um, it sticks out quite a lot, so I could probably get a much longer dropper post in there, but you know, it is what it is. The cranks right now, Samox cranks, I guess these are uh, Focus's own brand. Of course, got the big 38 tooth chain ring in there. The Bosch motor battery can drop out from the bottom, but interestingly, you actually have to lift up the rear of the bike if you want to take the battery out because otherwise it will hit the ground and then it won't clear over here. Another interesting thing is you can actually put the battery in upside down. So I don't know why this isn't fixed, but it really caused me a bit of a headache earlier today when the bike wouldn't work with the battery in. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, it's a fairly simple suspension system in the rear. Uh, basically a lot like what Specialized has been doing for years now. Um, just a horse link, but it's slightly different up here. Um, I rode it yesterday for about an hour and a half and the main pivot bolts came loose on both sides. So check your main pivot bolts every time you ride this bike, I guess. Shimano XT derailleur. I still haven't put the clutch back on after having to redo this cable as well because I wanted to swap the stem. Um, big boy cassette. This is a Deore cassette and then at the back MT5 calipers. The discs are absolutely massive. 220 millimeter discs on here. Floaters as well. It's got a Shimano XT shifter, which is good. And it's got a Shimano dropper lever, which is, well, it's a lever. And uh, both sides use this matchmaker system. So it looks clean, but you'll never get it quite right. So it comes with Minion DHR2s uh, front and rear. No DHF on this one, uh, but it's the XO Plus casing. Now this bike was 27.85 kilograms when I weighed it this morning and 27.35 kilograms once I made it tubeless uh, because it's not tubeless from the shop. And so I think a bike this heavy can probably do with a double down or even a downhill casing tire. This is a, a little bit silly that they're trying to save weight like this. Another interesting thing are the rims. Um, Raceface AR30s, they're offset, uh, which means your valve hole 
is not in the center. It looks a bit strange, especially when you're going tubeless and you have to retape the wheel because Focus or Race Face didn't do a very good job of taping the rim. Actually, the bike is very fun to ride, despite being a very heavy e-bike. I feel it's very balanced and because the frame is so heavy, I mean, it's a 28 kilogram e-bike, the battery alone is 4.3 kilograms. Because everything's so heavy, it actually makes up for the suspension being a bit subpar. Um, bottom of the range suspension, very little adjustability in there. And I wish I could play around with it a bit more to get it perfect. But the weight, or rather the sprung to unsprung weight ratio makes up a lot with this bike. The brakes weren't fully bedded in after yesterday's riding. I also gave them lead today, so they should be better when I ride it in just a bit. But my initial actual first riding impressions on the bike were actually pretty good. It also jumps incredibly well. I'm not a very good jumper. Uh, the jumps here aren't very big, but this bike is very balanced in the air. And again, because it's so heavy, you can actually get away with more rider mistakes on takeoff, I guess is what I'd say. Um, yeah, the Geo on the bike, I currently have it in the slack setting, I think, because the documentation with Focus is a bit of a working point, um, but it feels very stable, but a bit sluggish and obviously with a bike this heavy, you really have to put in the arm work and lean the bike and your body a little bit. You have to put some effort in to make this thing go around the corner. But once you get everything right, it's such a blast to ride, both up the hill and down the hill. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this long into the video. If you liked it, please do the whole like, share, subscribe sort of thing. But for now, I'm going to start my rant on this bike. You see, I actually love working on bikes, but I have never, ever been more just pissed off at a bike than I was at this bike starting yesterday already. Um, I don't know anything about e-bikes, to be honest. And um, well, when I was trying to get air in the tires, especially the rear tire, I couldn't get my pump on the valve properly because this little plastic thing was in the way and I thought, oh, this is just something to keep the valve from rattling. So I took it off and threw it away. Turns out this is your wheel speed sensor and the bike wouldn't work without the wheel speed sensor. So I had to find the plastic thingy again because there's a magnet in there, put it back on. That was my mistake, um, but they, it could be better documented. Um, so then this morning I wanted to swap out the CIS stem that has all the cables go through the top of the stem through the headset down I actually had to buy a special different across across cover that I can't get to line up properly it is just infuriating that I can't line this up properly um, but anyway I also started off with 
making the wheels tubeless and the taping job that either race face or focus did was horrendous where the valve goes through it was completely ripped um, there were like nicks out of the tape around the spokes i had to retape the front and the rear wheel both were well useless the way they were taped the brakes before i cut them to a correct length so it doesn't look like massive spaghetti up here there was so much air in them it was horrible um, the display that was on here was actually quite easy to remove and you can just route this little electrical cable straight to the remote without the Kiox display in here because I don't need a screen on my bike um, but it took so long just to get this done I, I couldn't work on it like in one go because I had other stuff to do but I, I reckon it took me about three hours just to get the stem swapped the headset back together and the brakes bled and all the cables trimmed because I mean when you trim your shifter cable you have to take the entire inner out uh, same for the dropper cable but then the outer for the dropper was very short and I couldn't reach from the top to get to the back of the outer so I had to um, actually I'll show you the other side my girlfriend after me uh, swearing for hours my girlfriend had the idea of well I had the idea of taking the charging cover off and then my girlfriend said okay just reach in there with some like long pliers and just wiggle the outer up and that's how I finally got the dropper inner cable back through because you know I couldn't hold it from here because I just cut the cable it was such a nightmare uh, there's more weird stuff going on so I said already there's three bottle bosses in the down tube and that's fine those work with bottles but then over here it looks like you can mount a bag uh, focus supplies a bag with this frame but none of the bolts they supply actually match. This is like an M6 or so, whereas uh, normal bottle bosses I think are M5s, because uh, all the bolts just went straight through. Um, very strange problem. And then also, as I said, and this is again my fault, um, I put the battery in instead of this way, this way. No error, everything closed up fine. Um, and when I turned the bike on, it just booted and shut down right away. So why it isn't keyed in some sort of way to prevent that sort of stuff? I don't know. So um, that's basically my complaints for yesterday evening and all of today. I've never been more upset with a bike than this one. But now that I'm riding it and beautiful weather, beautiful, very sandy trails. Now that I'm riding it, I absolutely love it. So um, stay around and uh, my review on this bike will be in a month or so when I feel like I really get a good feeling for it because right now there's still a lot of anger in me and I don't want to complain for a 20 minute long bike review. So um, thank you all so much for watching this long into the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.